progress or nothing until, you know, the St Mirren game where the team was, was going okay. Um, and I don't know where that result came from. The players know that that level of performance is unacceptable. You know, we've spoken to them this morning. They made things pretty clear of what's expected of them between now and the end of the season. They were in good form this morning, trained okay. And uh, I think they're all looking forward to the game tomorrow. We've got to put a lot of things right. Do you feel as if you've got the players here at the moment that can plug those gaps that have been evident all season? I do, yeah. I mean, um, we have got a good group of players. Um, you know, some of them haven't done themselves justice, and that's up to me to sort of get into the, you know, the mindset that they are good players, and you know, they, they, they owe not just themselves, but they owe the club and the support. No? You've got a chance to have a longer term future here, but in the back of your mind, would you feel as if you were about to say farewell to Celtic in the summer? This summer? What if this job hadn't come up? Possibly. Um, you know, I've, uh, you know, I, I've been doing my, my coaching licences and. Um, I was having a look at things, uh, how things would develop between, you know, finishing off my pro license and, and looking at maybe the future possibilities of, of getting a manager's job elsewhere. But now this opportunity has arisen, I'm going to try and make the most of it. How frustrated were you sitting on the sideline, very much on the periphery, with the talents that you feel you have that you could have maybe offered to Celtic? Well, I mean. I had, uh, had a job to do here. I enjoyed what I was doing, you know, for, for the main part of it. Obviously, you missed the the match day scenario, but you know, Tony had his own team, and I totally respected that. He was nothing but good to me, nothing but encouraging to me, um, and he was very good with the younger players as well. And he's he's given the likes of Thompson and McGann, and even Kerry in the European games the opportunity to to go and play. So he was very uh, forward thinking in that manner, and. Uh, he, I had a good, very good working relationship with him, and like I say, under these circumstances, it's difficult. I'm sorry to see him go, but I've got a job to do with the, with the remainder of the season. You know, if, if, if Rangers do win the three games in hand, it would potentially put you 16 points behind. Do you put your efforts into trying to get you into that lead, or is it about winning the Scottish Cup? Both. Every time you play for Celtic, you, it's, you have to win. It's a huge expectations on a club like this, and when you don't reach those expectations, there's the need for frustration and anger among supporters and um, among the players. Um, and the players have to realise the, the club's pretty unique. Um, every time you go out onto a pitch, you expect it to perform at a certain level and win. And um, we haven't done that recently. So that's the bottom line, really, between now and the end of the season, is to A, win the games and B, try and match a performance to do that. Is it always in the back of your mind this season that this situation could arise, there's a pressure to building on the manager that you would be asked to, to fill in? Not at all, no. Um, I was hoping Tony would be here for as long as he wanted to be. How do you try to alter the way you do as a player who's now gone from being a player, coach, and now as a manager at the top here? Well, I'm not their mate, like, you know, and then when I played with them, I was, you know, I was basically, in the last couple of years, I was captain of the team, and I was a wee bit older than the rest of them, and I did bark orders out, you know, was a, I did tell them what to do, so nothing's changed in that aspect. Um, obviously, you've got to take a wee step back from that now. That's why I brought you on in, he'll do most of the stuff on the, on the training ground, and I'll just monitor the progress of the players over the next few weeks. Do you find it helps you because you know what the goal for the core of the old firm is all about? You've been a part of it for so long, you know what you have to have to deal with the pressure of being a Celtic player, does it not? Look, I spoke to Martin O'Neill, spoke to Gordon Strachan. I spoke to Tony about it. I don't think anything prepares you for being a manager of the old firm. And uh, yeah, I've been here ten years. You could have the most experienced manager in the world and still find it difficult here. Um, it was, you know, I had difficult periods as a player on the edge, you know, things off the field. Um, I know the pressures that come with the job. So I know the Scottish scene. I think you know that's that's a benefit to me more than anything else. What advice does the career you just mentioned give you about this job? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> too many changes made over the last year. Too many changes. Well, that was uh, you know that was Tony's decision. He he wanted to you know do some surgery on the, on the squad, and uh, I don't know. I mean, you'd you'd have to ask other people that. Um, I think looking at them this morning, um, I think we've got good quality players here, and like I say. You know, you, 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 managers only as good as their players, and um, those players have probably not done themselves justice. You know, over the course of the season, and uh, I'm expecting a 
big lift from them and big performances from them from here on in. I want them to play really good, hard professional football from here on in. You were quite simply hit this team been too soft this season. Um, it's a good question. Probably there's a. I, I think there's a bit of a soft mentality, you know, about us, and uh, I think Rangers have had. Well, people might say they're maybe not as talented as the players we have. You know, they've got a good, you know, work ethic, good team ethic, and they don't know when they're beaten. Now, one is instill that in us. You last year about the advice you were given from previous managers. Was that and were you advised not to take it? No, not at all. No, they all said it's what a great job it is, and it's a wonderful opportunity for me. And uh, they said, like, you, you would regret it if you didn't take it. And I think it's. Uh, it's an absolute privilege, you know. I'm hoping that everyone will jump on the back of us now and come out and support the team from here on in and support me. In general, in general, in general in respect, though, you know, from, from your type of uh, management, what can you expect from the team? Because obviously, Mick, over the last <coughs> you know, decade or so, about playing with Celtic way. You know, what, what in your mind is the Celtic way? Winning, you know, bottom line, just win football games by hook or by crook. You know the way I played. You know, any advantage I, I would have got, I would have taken. I want my players to do that. I want them to be hard to beat. I want them to go out and give it everything they've got for the shirt. You know, maybe try and make them realise what the shirt means to so many people. It's it's an institution across the world. It's one of the best supported teams in the world. We've got great supporters who have suffered this season and deserve better. So they know that. They've been told that. And uh, it's just up to me now to get that out of them. Well, it's been uh, sort of, you know, I'm trying to keep a calm lid on it. Like, you know, I'm not getting carried away, you know, like, I've been preparing for something like this for, for a while, you know, so you know, I don't get caught up in all the hype of a job to do, and I just want to concentrate on that. And, uh, you know, I love football. And the next step for me after football was, was coaching. I'm doing that now. And like I say, I've got something in front of me now that is probably beyond my well.